Hi, and welcome to the 15th video in our C Sharp for Beginners tutorial series. In this video, we will actually be looking at the break and continue keywords, and we're going to be using that in different loops that we've seen. So we're going to be looking at uh, for loops and while loops today. Uh, and we're also going to be looking at some if statements to use the break and continue keyword. Uh, so let's actually just show a simple example first using the for loop just to kind of show what the break and continue keyword do exactly. Uh, so what we're going to do here is we're just going to create a simple for loop. Uh, so we know that the syntax for that is just going to be for, and then we're going to have our int uh, int i in here. We're going to make that equal to one, and then we're going to do i is less than or equals to ten. And then we're going to do our increment step as i plus plus, and then the open and closing curly brackets. And then what we're going to do in this loop here is we are just going to console dot right line the value of i. So in here, we will now get actually that it prints the values from one to ten. So now we're going to be taking a look at the break and continue keywords. So we've kind of already seen break with our switch statements and we exit out of our switch statement afterwards. Um, let's see what the break statement does inside of a for loop if we have a uh, decision statement here or an if statement. So let's say if um, I, uh, let's wrap these in parentheses. So I plus five equals equals 10. So if i plus 5 is equal to 10, what we're going to do here is we're actually just going to break. And now if we actually run this here, we will actually see that we get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then it stops. Now, why does this actually happen? So if we actually just walk through the code here, so if we have our for loop, we have our value equals 1, We it's less than 10, we go through it, it writes 1 to the console, it checks if one plus five equals 10, it doesn't, so we keep going. Two writes two to the console, uh, two plus five equals seven, so it does not equal 10. And then once we hit five, uh, we're gonna write five to the console, and then we're gonna say if five plus five is equal to 10, which it is, we actually hit this break statement, and this will actually break us out of our loop. So that's actually what this does. Now, let's say if we actually did a continue here instead of a break. Now, let's see what happens here. Okay, so here we actually see it doesn't seem like anything is happening. Now, the reason is because we still get 1 through 10, and that is because our console.write line is actually before the continue. So let's actually just change this console.write line and let's put it after our if statement, and let's see how this actually changes our code, our output. So here we can actually see now we get 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. We actually completely skipped over 5. So what this actually does is it starts iterating through the loop. So we go one, uh, one plus five is not equal to 10. So we write one to the output. Um, same thing for two, same thing for three, same thing for four. And then we hit five and then we go five. So five plus five is equal to 10. We go into this decision statement and we go continue. What continue does, it actually breaks out of the current iteration and goes right away to the next iteration of the loop. So it's skipping anything underneath the continue. So it's very similar to a break, but doesn't actually break the loop. We'll actually just exit out of the current iteration of the loop and then continues on. Um, so this is where if you ever wanted to skip some sort of, uh, let's say you had a for loop, but you only wanted to maybe skip all the ones that were even, you can have a decision statement of, if it's even, then just continue, don't do anything with it, or if they're odd, or if there's a specific number that you just don't want to do anything to, you can simply do a continue, and then it'll just continue on uh, so skipping that number. So let's actually take a look at uh, very similar examples, um, but using the while and do loop, or while 
or do while loops. Now you can use whichever ones you really want. Uh, we're going to be looking at while loops, um, but definitely these do pretty much the exact same thing with uh, do while loops. Again, that major difference is the do while loops will always execute at least once, whereas the while loops check the conditions before. Uh, but in our situation, actually, uh, based on what we're doing, uh, that condition should always kind of be hit uh, beforehand. So let's actually go ahead and let's take a look and see what we can do here. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a while true loop. Um, so this is actually probably not super recommended. Um, I always try to avoid having infinite loops. So I'm going to be coding this example with the break and continues. And then I'm actually going to be removing um, the break out of here and showing you how I would probably code this in a real life uh, situation just to avoid a uh, infinite loop possibility. So when we have this while equal uh, while true, so we know that this will always run here. Um, so what we're going to do is we're also going to create a string called in string. And what we're going to do is we're going to do some sort of like menu operation, kind of what we've seen in the past. Uh, so let's do in string is going to be equal to console dot read line. So we're going to be reading in a line here, and then we're going to say if in string dot to lower. So we're always checking for the lowercase since it is case sensitive equals to um, let's say print. And let's do that. And then we're going to say else if uh, in string to lower equals uh, skip. And then let's go ahead and let's do another else if in string dot to lower equals exit. And let's do one more. And let's do an else here. All right, so we have our if else if else if else operation. So what we're going to do here is we're going to give the ability for the user to either enter print, skip, or exit. Print will print the current number of iteration that we are at. Uh, skip will just completely skip that iteration and move on to the next one. Exit will just break out of the loop. So what we actually need here is we just need our, our counter here. So we're just going to initialize our counter at zero. So while true, um, so we are going to prompt the user to either enter print or skip. Uh, we can actually, we should actually probably put that in there right off the bat. So let's just do console.write line, enter print, skip, or exit. All right, and then if we are saying print, what we want to do is we want to do a console dot write line, and we want to write out the value of counter. If we are skipping, what we want to do is we want to do a um, continue. And if the word is exit, what we want to do is break. And if it's else, we're just going to do a console dot write line. And we're just going to write invalid entry, um, incrementing counter. All right. And what we are going to do here is we're going to do counter plus plus. Now, right here, um, I already know that there will be a problem here, but let's actually just run this code as is. All right, so we can uh, do print, skip, or exit. So let's do print right away. So we are at uh, the entry zero, as we know, because we're starting our loop at zero. Now, if I do print again, we're at one, two. Now, if I hit skip and I do print, we're going to be at three. Now, that's actually not what our skip is supposed to do. What I would expect to do is if I'm skipping, I should skip that number three completely. Um, and then if I do exit, we exit perfectly fine. 
Well, the reason being is we have our increment all the way down here, but we have our continue here. So if we hit that skip, we actually never increment. So what we need to do is we need to put that increment also right before the continue. So this way, if someone chooses the word skip, it'll increment that counter. So let's take a look at this once more here. Let's do print, we have zero, print, we have one, skip. Now if I do print, we get three because we skipped two all together. And if we do uh, gotcha, uh, invalid entry, incrementing counter, and we do print, we get five. Uh, so uh, an invalid entry is basically just skipping and we tell this to the user, invalid entry, incrementing counter. Um, and then we can do print and we get six. And if we do exit, we get exit. We don't get invalid entry or anything like that. So it does work perfectly fine. Now, the only thing about this is um, it is really not recommended to use infinite loops. It does make the code a little bit harder to read sometimes or harder to really know how do we get out of that loop without going into the code. And if this is hundreds or thousands of line long, it would be very hard to find out how we actually exit out of this loop. So the way that I would recommend writing this option, uh, which is very, very similar um, to this here, the only thing that I would suggest is I would recommend taking our, um, our else if for the break and putting that in the condition. And we're just going to say, as long as the string to lower is not equal to exit, now, in order to actually have this working properly, of course, we do need to take our input from the user before we even hit that loop. Uh, so let's do that there. So we actually won't. Uh, and let's make sure that we are prompting the user for the read line here. All right, and we already know that we don't need this else if because we have this exit here. Uh, now, if we take this out, all right, and that should be good. So now let's actually just see what this does. So we've already taken the console read line. So I do need to put this somewhere. Um, so I'm not really too, too sure where to put it. Um, I'm going to put it after this counter uh, plus plus right now. Since we've already taken it out of the, off the top because I need to ask for it at least once because we're doing a while loop. And I don't want to ask it once and then ask it again as soon as we go into that loop. So let's actually run this code here. And let's do print. So we get zero. So that, that's good. Um, if we walk through the code here, we will see that um, we're inserting print while the in string to lower is not equal to exit. So we know it's not equal to exit. It's equal to print. So we're going to write down our counter. And then we've incremented our counter and now we are prompting once again the user. So if we do print again, we are going to get one. Now, if I actually do skip here, now you're going to see it is completely locked up. I cannot do anything on the screen. And that is because we are now stuck in a infinite loop here. Now this infinite loop was caused by error, um, but the way that the reason why is so now we've got to this bottom part. We said we're going to be equal to skip. So the while loop triggers, it's not equal to exit. So we are inside here and we go into this else if statement. It is equal to skip. So we're going to increment our counter and we're going to continue. So now we go into the next iteration. So we are actually never prompting the user for another entry in this case. So the way that we would actually fix this, very similar to how we needed to put the, the counter plus plus over the word continue, we actually do need to put another read line above the continue keyword. And let's run this and let's actually try print again. We get zero, print again, we get one. Skip, print, we get three, that's perfect. We enter an invalid entry, we get invalid entry, incrementing counter. Print, we get five, which is exactly what we would want. And if we do exit once again, although exit is not a valid entry in here, technically we would print out invalid entry incrementing counter. But because we're reading the line at the end here, right away we are checking if that line is equal to exit. If it is, 
and we are just exiting out of that while loop without needing the keyword for break. So there are a lot of situations where you might not actually need that break keyword. Uh, the continue keyword is very useful, especially if you don't want to run uh, certain iterations. Uh, so that is just uh, something to keep in mind. Uh, now, of course, this example, you probably don't really need the continue keyword. We could just put everything into different else, uh, the if statements, just increment the counter uh, in this first if statement uh, after we print it out. And then we can ask for the read line at the end. And then this one, we could have just incremented the counter and then it would have still done the read line at the end. Uh, it is really, really based on the situations that you would need breaking continues, but they are very useful keywords to at least know about and to be able to use in your loops to skip iterations or break out of loops uh, in case of certain uh, conditions or inputs. Uh, so I hope that helped uh, you guys for the break and continue keywords. Uh, next up, we are going to be actually looking at arrays. Um, and collections. Uh, so that'll be very, very interesting. And then we are going to be taking a look at more intermediate topics. As I mentioned, we're going to be looking at classes and some more object oriented uh, programming. So stay tuned for that. Now, if you guys have any questions or comments for this video, or if you guys have any questions for other topics, please let me know down in the comments below if it's something that I think a lot of people will benefit from. I will definitely make a video for you guys. If it's something a little bit more specific, I'll just answer you guys directly. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and make sure you also hit that notification bell to be notified when the next video comes out. And I will see you guys on the next video.